Hello and welcome to Never Alone London, See It. Never Alone London, See It brings together highlights from our other Never Alone London events. Hear it, speak it and express it, especially for World Mental Health Day 2021. The COVID-19 pandemic and restrictions have taken a huge toll on the lives of young Londoners. From mental health to education, life has been turned upside down by the pandemic. The Never Alone London Festival is all about supporting you to build resilience and promote positive well-being as we begin to recover from the last 18 months. Across these three events, young people have come together and shared messages of hope through live spoken word and music performances, an open mic night and creative workshops and a panel discussion and conversations. We have mapped out our events to the theme of Never Alone London. It's our way of saying that we need to collectively support one another as we begin to recover from the impact of the pandemic. The range of activities opened up conversations on breaking down barriers, building resilience and the importance of having a sense of community. We have shared experiences, learned from each other and discovered more about the support available in an entertaining way. We've been lucky enough to hold all of this at Rich Mix in East London. So we hope you enjoy this collection of highlights from our activities. Whether watching in or on the go or dipping in and out, you can find the full festival program and all the discussions on the Thrive London website and YouTube channel. Check out www.thriveldn.co.uk. We know that everyone is dealing with new and ongoing stress and anxieties because of the COVID pandemic, especially young people. But remember, there is support available for whatever you are going through. Please speak to someone if you are struggling at any time. And wherever you are tuning in from, whether in London or beyond, join the conversation on social media. Use hashtags, hashtag neveralonelDN. This production has been developed by Thrive London and the Mayor of London's Play Outreach Team for World Mental Health Day 2021 and the highlights brought together by the content creatives. This World Mental Health Day, I'm urging you to speak openly about how you're doing. Ask yourself how you're really doing. Speak with your friends, family, colleagues, your employer. By speaking up, we will all be playing a role in lifting the stigmas around mental health. Around two million Londoners a year are affected by it. Providing the support needed for those, especially people who've been disproportionately affected by the pandemic is one of my top priorities. And I'm delighted that young Londoners have led the way in creating a range of fantastic events to mark this year's World Mental Health Day with diversity, expression and creativity at its heart. As London recovers from the pandemic, we must work towards a city that is stigma free and where all Londoners are supported and happy to have a direct and honest conversation about how they're feeling. Thank you. Good evening. We are Blisson and this piece is called You Are Never Alone. How can you be alone when you are what is home? No, you can do no wrong, so please pick up the phone and call me when you're ready to. You are never alone. How can you be? When every cell in your body is in unison to keep your heart beating. When the earth, the trees, the birds and the bees share the same air you're breathing. Your thoughts have been recycled through generations. You're not the only one that feels this pain. 
The foundations the collective share are the same. It's insane. You have you 24-7. The one person who knows you as well as you do. If one thought can convince an army, imagine what an army of thoughts could do. Your mind is full of voices, ruminating on what could have been and fixated on what could be. But if the focus is in the now, you truly thrive when you set your thoughts free. Hmm. Why do we choose pain over love? Because pain can feel more familiar. But when we realize that how we choose to view life means there are countless realities to consider. Whew. Yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy because we fall in order to rise. Nothing is ever linear. Mistakes are actually blessings in disguise. And although it can feel quite easy to hold on, but letting go is trickier. It's actually what we need to learn more, more of. <sighs> Observe how far you've come and where you've derived from. Stand strong in all you've done. Doesn't matter what stage of life you're in, your journey has only just begun. You are never alone. When I'm at one with myself, I know I'm never alone. Divine assignment, introspection, for I am my first home. Don't get me wrong, sometimes it's dark, but the light always returns. When my mind, body and soul are in alignment, it sets a spark to a flame that will forever burn. Never alone, never alone, you are never alone. I know those thoughts get overwhelming when you get in that zone. Turn down the volume on the chatter, and tune into your soul. Calm your breathing, hold your heart, and feel your life rhythm flow. When times get lonely, you can call me. You are never alone, whether it's for a chat or a laugh, or even a moan. I look at you and I see a smile on the surface, but underneath it, I know your soul is hurting. Come, let me envelop you with my love, embrace you with my arms. I can be your solace, we don't need words. Be still, be silent. Find peace, calm. You see, you never know what someone is going through, what happens behind that door. They'll tell you a part of the story, but just know there's always more. Be kind, show compassion. I see you, you see me. That's true intimacy, for love is the highest frequency. This life is bittersweet. It has its ebbs and its flows. Take the highs with the lows. Grieve, breathe. Release, know when to let go. Hold your head up to the sky and look into the stars and you'll see infinite reasons to remember you are perfect just as you are. And if ever that loneliness should return, call on God, your source, your guides and know you are never alone. You are never alone. If you decide you're boarding a plane of pain that contains a substance you can't explain, don't think twice, just pick up the phone. And like an MJ remedy, you got a friend in me. I can listen to you, let your troubles let loose. And if you feel sad or down because no one's around, try to keep your head above the ground. Keep your mind aligned with your emotions and time and give yourself breaks so you can create the future you want to mandate. Try a free write. Step into some woods, see, when it's a sunny day, putting pen to paper feels great. Integrate some fate and you can enter a galactic wave, 838, writing for freedom. Like an unrefined soul tribe scribing for many reasons. Embarking on positive energies, releasing any unwanted feelings. From season to seasons, creating our own life thesis. Because like the moon in her many phases, we can show different faces in, unknown, in an unknown place. Loneliness can sometimes feel like the only thing left to embrace. Then I remember a friend saying, dark days come and go, so try not to fight them. Sit with your feelings till they are ripened. Meditate, swim, jog or pray, and let the juices wash away the pain of yesterday. Be around positivity. Protect your aura, protect your energy. Let your third eye beam, 
And like the birds in the sky, you can try to fly free. Try not to live for social media likes, because that can drip because that can dim your inner shrine within a blink of an eye. Motivate your inner desires. You don't need an empire, just some concrete souls that live to inspire, despite the raging fire. Just remember, winter, autumn, summer or spring, there is always someone who will answer your ring. And if there's no ring that rings in sync to your cosmic vibrations, your inner ink, then wash that shadiness down the sink. What matters to you what matters is you, not what others think. Don't think twice, just pick up the phone. You are never alone. You are never alone. No matter the highs or lows, there is always space to grow. Being on your own doesn't mean that you're lonely. Feeling outside of a crowd can feel the same as when silence seems loud. Learn to love your own company. I choose great times by myself over mediocre time with multiple people. Cherish your imagination. Wonder with those wandering thoughts. Stay away from closed doors. The right ones will open when you need them. If not now, the time is not right. Out of sight, out of mind, but never out of time. Because your time is yours to do with it as you please. Be at ease until you breathe easy. Believe me, feeling alone is not being alone. A house isn't a home unless you feel it. You won't find what's hidden unless you seek it. 333, where we can be. Friends we meet and words we speak. Just like messages, bad feelings can get deleted. Forget peak times, we're in our prime and we're peaking. New heights we'll be reaching. Forgetting how to sleep because I'm constantly dreaming. If this isn't for me, I'm leaving. Leave, breathe, forget people I'd rather spend time with some trees. Be at ease with the breeze and feel free to be me. I rhyme different, my mind's wisdom comes alive in the night in time. I'll listen, thrive on free thoughts, rhyme as we talk. My light shines brighter when it's seen more. Free falling into loneliness is easily done but not realised. But we all right. We aligned. We find ourselves after feeling lost. If the best things in life are free, then how much does freedom cost? You can't get alone to stop feeling alone. Never feel in debt to your friends, what's meant will be shown. You are never alone. Hi, my name's Hazel. Hi, Hazel. And I'm an addict. My consumption of destruction is an eruption of the appetite I suppress to impress my own inner dialogue. Perhaps I'm choosing not to see through the fog as it descends, but what if I don't know how to be sober? How to enjoy those sober thoughts? The sober walks on the wild side. Sober thoughts to battle the demons inside. Sobriety as a newfound deity of which I embody her power. Does addiction leave me in this weird situation in which the connection I seek is caught up in misfire? A neurological interruption of synaptic transmission in which my impulsive nature stops me from actioning my full potential. I'm missing signals. This is the wrong type of hunger. Consumption, addiction in which my thoughts have become my fictional reality, withholding my sanity and the realisation that my vanity is to blame for my perpetual shame. How can I see straight if I'm not thinking the same? I'm a fraud. The apparent self-care I portray just conveys the fakeness thinly veiling this pain to the people who cho still choose to surround me. The ripple effect of my lack of respect towards myself causing damage to my loved ones, so I push them away like it's a game. I'm starving myself of my full potential, yet I convince myself that I am not defined by the pills I take or my habitual self-harm. I am not defined by the days that I starve. I am not defined by the lies I tell to convince myself that I have not fallen. 
The kindness I put to one side because I am not worth it. The suicide I plan because my world does not deserve it. The number of times I stray from the path to sobriety. The steps I trace back. The relapse I run to. I convince myself that for as long as I am walking, there is hope. Because the one step forward and 25 back show me I can still cope as I catapult through what I thought was rock bottom. I have come to realise it is time to scrap my plans and expectations. Scrap the quicksand I have cemented around myself and face this. Scrap the conditions on my happiness because in this fight for the right life, the eventual conditional discharge will not be honourable. Time to actually live. To live and not coast through moments. To run towards a line I don't live by so as not to forfeit my future. To consume my present and become addicted to my nature. For real beauty can come from real moments of pain, but only if addiction to being the victim is faced. And I am a woman of many faces. I won't let them destroy her the same way they broke me, but they are I. I am she, and through everything not meant to be, again, I have fallen. I am fickle. These words stick and whilst they temporarily allow the fog to vacate, perhaps this isn't the end of my chemical interruption. In moments of weakness, the internet allowing me to seek intimate human connection I can keep at a distance. Living with an addiction is an affliction with devastating consequences. My, my consequential attitude to growth is as systematic as my drug abuse and as my symptoms develop systems, my addiction develop defences. My ultimate destruction, not something I want my nearest to witness, so I don't. In these spotlit moments in which I appear to shine, in reality I am engulfed by the flames of my own shame. Closed eyes I stumble once again into the fire. Life's desire downed by pills I have once again found and finally the darkness consumes me. Hi, my name's Hazel. And I'm an addict, 362 days clean, and here to set the truth free. Thank you. I need to go and grab my book for the next one. <laughs> this is called Today I Can't Feel the Sun. Today, I can't feel the sun. The weatherman said highs of 25, but I am 27 and sober and my mind is a storm. No, my mind is a tornado. No, my mind is a tsunami enslaved by the calm before the second wave hits. And then it hit me. I want more to life than I can give me. I want to feel the warmth without it burning. I want to experience the rain without being drowned. I want to play in the snow and thaw my heart and... I guess this powerful imagery has to count for something. Beyond the countless times I have counted the days, the countless times I have counted the hours, the countless times I have counted the minutes, the countless times I have counted the seconds, the countless times I have counted my breaths as I tried to breathe beyond hyperventilation into panic beyond existence, and I am tired of counting. Someone somewhere said we are the director, producer and protagonist of our own lives, but I just want to direct mine so that I can shout cut and have it mean more than when my skin screams it. I want this to be over, but I don't want it to be the end. There must be more. I didn't fight every battle to settle for an anticlimax of depression. I didn't fight years of pain to give in to giving it to myself. I didn't fight to deserve warmth just to force myself to freeze and it is so cold. Humans as beings are warm-blooded, yet as my blood spills, I'm bitten by frost. Lost in memories of a childhood I ran too fast through into an adulthood in which I still crisscross and a rope I'll one day jump to. I'm trapped in time. No, I'm trapped in my mind. No, I'm trapped in a society in which broken bones are socially acceptable, but bipolar and borderline personality disorder are labels people refuse to read into. These labels stick like those on prescription bottles we are not meant to disclose and I expose my soul so that others can accept what they have without it being what they are. I am not broken. 
I am a jigsaw who still has pieces to find. I am a mind with mountains to climb so I can see through the clouds. I am a warrior with many wars ahead of her. I am. Though simply being is not currently within my grasp, I'll still reach for it. My fire burns bright with desire as my superpower has my feelings intensified. Hitting heights you would be blinded by. My polarity has me spinning till I'm dizzy. Speeding through a tunnel, trying to look towards a light. I don't want to be the end. Focusing on the journey with the wind blowing through my hair. Scenes of jumping from heights dominate as new heights have me scared. No, have me petrified. No, have me electrified. No, have me drawing upon a strength I never believed was mine, let alone believed I could find it. Battling demons at times in which there is no fight left in my mind. In one world in which two wars are a distant memory. Free me from these shackles for wars fought drain in a time in which we should thrive. I am not sick. I am ill. And I will work till I can feel alive. I will not take this lying down. My powers are infinite. The primate in me pushing primal instincts, pushing me to cloud nine so that despite the odds against me, I can feel the sun as I am floating. Coasting, fighting, winning, mostly losing, but I get up every time. Believe me when I tell you that one day I will want to be alive. My eyes will shine. My beams will smile bright and a long life will be tenable. Counting up to numbers previously unreachable. Today, I can't feel the sun, but I am 27 and I am sober and my life is far from over. Thank you. So hi Hayley, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, um, my name's Hayley Melenda, um, as you described. Uh, I do public speaking and I like to more or less call myself a change agent simply because I believe that if you want, don't complain, be the change. That's kind of basically the narrative that I live by. And I think, you know, growing up in the area that I did grow up in, I saw a lot of things like knife crime, so saw people pass away, gone to funerals, or people who I've loved, unfortunately, have had their life taken by knife crime and violence and all those type of things. And I think I just more or less want to contribute to being a change in my community and trying to inspire others that, you know, the best I can say is that your environment doesn't have to necessarily be um, your limitation, but if anything, it can actually be a launch pad for you and it can actually be something that inspires you to go out and do more things. So um, there's so many different things that I do, but more or less, I think to summarise um, what I'm most passionate about, I'm most passionate about, um, I put it on my Instagram by actually, is we rise by lifting others. So my heart is more or less to ensure that people around me feel that um, they're being uplifted, whether that's through my words, whether that's through my music, whether that's through my speaking engagement, whatever I can do to uplift and inspire anyone, that's more or less what I like to do. You've spoken quite openly in the past about your own struggles with your mental health. How do you feel this has impacted your journey and what advice would you give young people with dealing with similar experiences? Um, I think one thing I've realised about mental health is I think many people... Um, they mistake mental health as mental health issues. Everybody has mental health. If you're a human being, you have mental health. Um, it's like how we have health. But obviously, if you have a cold, that means your health is probably on the low end of the spectrum. And the same with mental health. Like, if it's low on the spectrum, it's likely you're going to have mental health issues. And I think it's very easy to kind of be like, oh, I have mental health. Yeah, of course, all of us have mental health. But it's when you have mental health issues, that's where we have to be able to understand the difference. And it was when I was in 2016, that's when I started actually having like some mental health issues. So depression, and anxiety, and unfortunately, um, it did lead me to a suicidal place. And um, different things sparked that, if I'm being honest. But one of the things that helped me cope was actually having a gratitude journal, being open, um, having a community of people around you like I think there is so much power in community there's an African proverb that actually comes and says like it takes a, a village to raise a child 
And I don't think it just takes a village to raise a child. I think it takes a village and a community to sustain a child. Um, I think, as I said, we're all children. Like there's, there's an inner child in every single one of us. There's still trauma and different things that I think every human being is still navigating, no matter how old they are, they're still dealing with. Um, so I think it was also addressing these things, you know, being honest with myself and also um, giving myself grace. I think as human beings, we are harder on ourselves than we are on others. And sometimes, you know, you can meet someone who's really mean or meet somebody who treats you like crap, but you don't understand that they're just project projecting the voice that they're telling themselves. And um, I think when we learn to give ourselves more grace and to give ourselves more understanding and treat ourselves like love literally love yourself as thy neighbor if you love yourself first I think it allows you to pour back into you and I think that's something that's really helped me in my mental health journey what advice would you give young people that are on social media and there's loads of like negative stuff being pushed towards them um what would what's your advice for young people and how do you think they can cope with that big fat b button block 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 it like i'm just i'm just not afraid to block i mute like for my mental health i've got so many people who I've, i follow and i mute them if you if you just irritate me or if you're if you're triggering i'll mute you i i'm just the type of person if i just don't see you i'm at peace i like to sleep well at night you know like i think i like to be able to sleep well at night and wake up at night and just not be bothered um so i definitely do actually ad i'm an advocate of the block button and the mute button but in terms of other things that i think you should do i think at the end of the day um your algorithm in terms of in terms of um social media sorry pardon me social media knows your algorithm and I think, you know, the more that you engage in toxic um, content, that is going to pop up more. So go out of your way to actually find positive content. So I actually got out of the way to actually find positive content. And how do you go out of the way to find positive content? You follow people that post this type of content and unfollow people who don't post this type of content. And the more that you follow these types of people, your algorithm will switch it. So my explore page on Instagram normally is relationships. And I recently got engaged, so it's going to be relationships. It's wedding dresses, like crazy. <laughs> it's wedding venues, it's catering, it's all this. Because I'm literally, all I'm doing is looking at wedding dresses, looking at catering. This is literally what I've been doing for the past two days and my explore change has my explore page has already shifted um so if you engage with this type of content your explore page will shift and I definitely would also say um something that I'm very very passionate about is make sure that you have relationships and you have a real life offline I think sometimes with young people we can more or less amplify the online life and actually forget that there's people offline and there's things kind of happening offline as well. So um, I'm very much an advocate of, yes, online, make sure you park it for a bit, sometimes take time off, but also have the time for you to check in with your friends offline, check in with your family offline, put your phone down. If you need to do a social media fast and come off it for a bit, like that, that's, you know, okay too. How do you think young people should pick their role models? Um... I think the best thing I can say is, you know, what's the fruits of their character? I think don't look for um, competence first, look for character. Because I think it's so easy to be inspired by, you know, millions of views and millions of pounds. It's so easy to be um, inspired by jewellery. But I'm one person that I'm inspired by the things that we don't talk, talk enough about in society, but I think is very important, such as humility such as loyalty, such as integrity. And those are the things that actually allow someone to last. Um, your skills and your network will get you in the room, but it's actually your character that will keep you there. And I'm one person that loves longevity. You know, I've been in the speaking industry more or less for eight years, and it's not to toot my horn, but my um, focus has never been on awards or certain clients. My award, my, um, my focus has always been how can I serve more and how can I basically more or less, you know, be a better person every single day? And I think when you're around somebody or when you choose to be mentored by someone who is for your character and for your integrity and for your humility and loyalty, I'm telling you, they are more powerful than any mentor that has all the money in the world because they want you to last. And I think it's so easy for us to feed into the culture, the microwave culture that there is, that it's kind of like, oh, well, let me blow quick. But, you know, microwave food... <laughs> it's not going to always taste good. And I'm one person living in an African household, like, 
microfood is just not bank. Like, when my mum cooks, she has to make sure it's in the stove, it's in the oven, it's getting slow cooker, the pressure cooker. Like, those are the best type of meals. Um, so I'm just the type of person that really does believe that when picking your real models, your role model, should I say, make sure they have great character, make sure the life that they live offline is way more um, appealing than the life online. So, yeah. What advice would you give a young person like me that's going into the world now? Um, I'll say, I'll remind you how beautiful you are. That, which you are, by the way, it's not, I'm speaking to you directly. Um, I would tell you how special you are and that you're in that room because you're important and what you're necessary and don't ever allow imposter syndrome to talk you out of the rooms that you're called to be in. And I say, lastly, the advice I say is focus on character, sis. Focus on character, focus on integrity, humility, loyalty. And just remember, those are the things that will allow you to stay in the rooms. It's not about getting there, it's about staying there. It's about longevity. And as you cultivate character, um, everything else will fall into place. And yeah, once again, you're beautiful. I think if you can get into that, that moment of remembering how great you are, then I think everything else would exceed from there. This next one's called Two Toothbrushes. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoy. You know, I'd never known how much joy could come from seeing two toothbrushes standing together in one mug. The way a unity of two utensils could bring about a sense of symbolism that had served to support in low-minded solo morning struggles from the simple opening of a cupboard door. But that past tense stings, swings, sings and slices because I'd never known how much pain could come from seeing two toothbrushes occupying the same space in one mug. Two utensils, but only one still serving a purpose. The other left holding on to hope and dried up toothpaste stains. And that day I threw it away, carried so much weight I pretty much collapsed. The unwelcomed emissions from my world like dark materials into scission, entwined with tears and memories which combined with a collusion of confusion and lack of clarity as I attempted to challenge the reality of the silent in those spaces where audible bites had raised edges of lips to eyes so many times, it had felt as close to flying as I had ever known. And if I had had to die in those moments, I would have refused the universe and laughed because I believed we were to exist beyond the boundaries of realities. Dancing through deja vu multiverses, star-dusted atoms resonating throughout the expanses because... Such a rhythm could not be abandoned. But it seemed, in spite of my beliefs, such things were presently out of reach. I am Mixes, now 40 years too long out of its box. Existence is pain, Jerry. And to address that moniker personified, you have become the greatest teacher I have ever known. Although, like you, your methods are not always welcome, but lessons once learned do tend to stick. Those times where walking is a pattern akin to breaking bone and snapping sinew again and again simply to try and make it to the end of each day, you, I decided, are the universe's way of teaching me patience, slowing me down, allowing focus to move away from lofty wants and settle down on grounded needs. And it seems at times I'm still trying to find my feet, but you have many angles of approach and subject matters to meet. Your lesson plans covering far more than methods to manage chronic physical conditions, psychological imbalances and anxiety wrapped in decisions. And once learning to navigate the labyrinths a different way, shifting prisons into prisms, inspiring a new line of sight in my vision, there is a twist. A shift which drifts the pain in a way where its weight shapes the lanterns of green light to help fight the fear, see clear and hear in ways I could not before. 
Invisible illnesses illuminated through lenses of empathy and lived understanding so that I can reach out amidst the dark and say, we have not been abandoned. Yes, this stuff is madness, but the simple fact that we are still here shows self-evident strength beyond compare. And even though the darkness makes it hard to see it, you are super heroic just by being. And I can't help but find the irony funny of how such things can isolate and yet how vast and deep the lessons do resonate. Diversity's undeniable beauty and yet you are the ultimate unifier. As we can all rally amidst the lessons of pain and loss. Lost sons, lost daughters, lost mothers, lost fathers, lost sisters, lost brothers, lost family, lost lovers, lost friends, lost names, lost names, lost names, lost names. Lost innocence, lost faith, lost culture, lost ways. But the thing with lessons is how they train. Teaching ways to wade through such tar pits as exhaustion grips and it feels as though there's nothing beyond it, but hold on a minute. We are still here. And to those who did not make it, you never truly disappear. And yeah, in the thick of it, it can feel as though there is no air. The sheer weight of it impossible to bear, as if there is no way out or forward from here, but hold on. These lessons are not done, and though so often unwelcome, do not run, for they will serve to support. And don't get me wrong, I'd be more than happy to not have gone through what has come, but since some parts of this pilgrimage have already been won, I might as well harness this lantern's light forming fellowships so that perhaps one day we can see the relationships between one another are held and forged in all of the lessons of pain and love that have come before. And pain, in whatever shape you take, no matter the density of your weight, as long as I hold on every day, allowing each lesson to teach their way, though so often unwelcome, you are the greatest teacher I have ever known. And in hindsight, I thank you. For through you, I have come to discover truths of self that before did not show. Help others through what I know and grow as such things do ripple outward and continue to flow. I had never known what two toothbrushes in one mug could do. And I'm still here, still learning, still journeying, just like you. I... And Meeksies, now 40 years too long out of its box. Existence is pain, Jerry. Wobble up a dub dub. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. I'm T, everyone. Um, so the, the, this is mental health night, um, everything's mental health, so these are my core values. I believe that each and every one of us is trying to do good. I believe it's easy to lose faith if you believe you are misunderstood. I believe that labels, as compelling as they are, they'll never represent the people sharing space in your jar, nor the swellings of the heart I believe in stops and starts, smoothness and friction, hollow anecdotes and powerful actions. I believe in gaining traction beyond affliction, contrast and contradiction. I believe in trust, affection. I believe in manifesting and I believe in projection. These mutterings just under my tongue in reflection. They look quite the same in this crumbling cranium when the bed I was laying in was under the stars, under the blackness. The vastest of blankets is too small to vanquish the hardening skin on my silvering scars where they put me back together after they tore me apart. I don't believe my stomach churns from the pains of periods past. But that moment you forget to laugh. I believe that's the very second you start to suffer for your art and I believe in education, the gift of words and how we play with them, relay them in our brain, say them again and sing with them. So sing those stories, even though it's stinging, 
Sometimes it's sore, I know it's prickly pause. Difficulty stored in little drawers behind exhausted corneas, but I believe you will find fire and you will spit it from your gums. I believe you'll learn the right lessons to communicate what you've done. And I don't believe in true love, but more in two lovers who truly believe in something above this plane. They find themselves one day in the rain, overrode all logic because they were ready again. They lived it, loved it. They sipped it and smothered it. They got it so right. And then they fucked it because I believe in the cyclical nature of us, this ebb and rise, this flow and fall. I believe that in this world, on somebody's terms, at least I've got it all. And I believe a fall from grace will save you from the awful space that made you cage yourself away. Because when your mates call, be grateful. Because I believe in sore and painful storytellers, raw disgraceful. I believe if you are called insane, you might behave insanely because I believe it is all in a name. You call it toxic and you will find poison. You call him trustworthy and he will never do you wrong unless by some accident that he couldn't have possibly planned against. And in that man's defence, his intentions were pure. I believe hurt people hurt people. And I believe in invisible cures. I believe that nature is beautiful and I believe in igniting the core. I believe that every fucker out here is living equally flawed and I don't always believe in me, but I believe in you all. I believe if you feel shiny, be fucking shiny. <laughs> oh, God! Stop! Oh. No! Oh, my God! <laughs> and I believe it might be simpler than we thought. Because I believe that by believing in belief itself, you hold all the keys to all the locks on all the doors. Thank you. <laughs>
Don't feel anybody else. I can't believe you thought these days would end you, girl. You've got to know how powerful those lungs are. I'll remind you, you are smart and believe me, you have the wildest imagination. Wild enough to cage you and have you thinking you weren't enough. Weren't enough what? What are you even waiting for? What are you scared of? Why are you in the fetal position thinking about what might have not? Why are you quiet when you could be rioting? Shying away from the plane that you're piloting, filing away all these skills. You have piles of them and you deserve to smile and bliss. You deserve so much more than this. So let us interlock our fingers as our knuckles white as we clench our fists and fuck this life. Look far beyond its eyes and ride him like a champion into the night. I'm not concerned with heavy size. I'll have him screaming for one more bite, forgetting the wife, forgetting the time. I am now unapologetically stealing what is mine because everyone's important and everybody shines. But when you're backed up in a corner with your shoulders weighing on your spine, when the hairs on the backs of your calves are touching the bottoms of your thighs and you are thinking about anything, anything more than this life, a way out of the labyrinth. A clear path without any more twists. Remember, everyone is trying. Everyone is rising. And you are gaining leverage, whether or not you like it. Thank you. <laughs>
I'm gonna take this time to plan, you know, so when we come out, God willingly that we do come out, I know what I'm gonna do next. I know, you know, what's my next step? What do I wanna achieve? Where, where do I wanna go? It's rather than, I guess, blame and shame, oh, we're in a lockdown. This is my vacation. So in the vacation, I'm gonna plan, you know, use my time wisely. That's something I've always learned, use my time wisely. Thank you so much. I think, yeah, your lived experience is going to be different and what you perceive loneliness as is going to, like you said, when you were sectioned, you were alone. You really were alone and away from the world. But no, just knowing at the back of your mind, hold on, it's not just me. We're all going through this. It just makes it make a bit more sense. And then you can just, like you said, use that time to actually plan, which I'm sure a lot of people did and started up their own businesses and really excelled throughout the pandemic. I'm sure there's some great success stories that have come out of it, um, which you're, you're welcome to share throughout the panel, by the way, as well. Um, more. Yeah, I think for me as well, like everyone said, everyone has different um, experiences. For me, so I care for my, for my younger sister, and I think it was really, really difficult because, like, like you said, Kate, like a lot of my friends said, oh, you know, we've got this time to, to focus on this project or I can do this. For me, I had to balance a lot of, responsibilities and balance a lot of things that I never had to think about doing for example home learning homeschooling and things like that so it was really uh, a difficult time for me and definitely a time where I I felt quite lonely um and yeah and also having graduated <laughs> during the pandemic was really difficult and I can imagine for a lot of young people as well um, in my position um again in that sense feeling lonely not not lonely in the sense that mentally but in terms of that you're alone in this process um of graduating and having to find your own path and finding a career when everything was basically shut so yeah there was a lot of different streams i think to answer that question um but equally like you said um it was a time for me to reflect and think about what i really want and just go strip it down to the basics about what is what is life really about and what do I really want from this and I think one thing that um, I was able to do in that time is actually start start my own business um, start a small business with my with my partner it's a pet supplies business um, um, and yeah uh, so that really gave me a chance and I don't if it wasn't for the pandemic that definitely wouldn't have been something that I would I would have been able to do and I've had conversations with a lot of the young people I work with who've also um, had that time to reflect so I think yeah there was negatives but also positives from it. Well congratulations on actually going through the struggle and still being able to start a completely new business and your sense of loneliness is interesting because it's not again it's similar to everyone here really it's not that you're not around people it's actually you're having to fight this alone because everyone is struggling and you can't go to another person's household and ask for help you're actually having to fight this pandemic within your household which in itself has its own challenges and you still manage to create something so uh, props to you and some people may not have been able to because this is a reality you know so some people were made redundant didn't have their jobs how are they going to look after their kids and then they were trying to even cut off um, free school meals for kids like I'm sure parents as well sisters whoever the carers must have had a lot of pressure um, especially those as well who just lived alone as well how do how do we connect with those who aren't digitally confident or connected when there's a will there's a way pretty much and I I as well think like to counter that it does not hurt to say hi or smile at people when you see them in person. Honestly, like I feel like everyone that now is so, you know, in into the world, into the digital world, forgets that you can still smile at people and say hello and you know how are you. Like I remember, and again, it's, it is back in the days, but I'd walk down my street and you'd get, you know, the, the just the residents. Good morning. How are you? And I mean, at that time, I was probably quite shy. Then I didn't answer. Just nod my head. But I mean, these are the things that we take for granted living in a digital world. So I think there's a way to still be connected in person, um, other than digitally as well. And more. So how do you, as a young person, think the pandemic impacted your age group specifically? Do you think it's reversible as well? Um, yeah, so it, so it definitely impacted my age group and young people in generally um, in a number of ways, uh, education, work, social life, and a lot more. Um, and this had a knock-on effect on not only physical health, but mainly mental health, which can also impact physical 
And I think there's a lot of different strands to that as well, because within young people, there are also groups such as homeless young people, um, young carers, children in care, um, and young children and young people in care. And I think then they have their different struggles as well. And um, a lot of it is to do with just not being able to express themselves freely um, and just not being supported, I believe, by by the government. Um, unfortunately, during the pandemic, um, I know I did and a lot of my peers felt like we weren't listened to and there wasn't the support given by who is meant to support us, basically, who is meant to provide um, support for us. Um, so I think, and then, and then a lot of that is also systemic, I believe that. Um, is kind of not looked at upon for young people to be these in these rooms making decisions um, because they don't they don't know what the right thing is, quote unquote. But um, and and it, there are organisations, for example, um, the Mayor of London's peer outreach team, where we are a group of young people and we are making movements. And there are some companies that that hire younger people to get a, a, an approach, and that in that terms of getting a young person's approach so there are definitely positives to it but I just wish that it was more in within the government's you know um on, on, on the table with the government uh, making those decisions and whether it's um reversible I, I think unfortunately no um due to the lack of support and the sort of negative portrayal like Antonio saying in media of young people um I don't think it's reversible but I wouldn't want it to be reversible because to reverse something means you go back to, to its original state and I think I'd want it to improve but we can improve it in a positive way by making by making these positive movements and I think that's what um that's what we should what we should do and um and a lot of the ways in which we can do this is is not just via protests although that has been a, a big one during a pandemic but just kind of like speaking up and um, just voicing your opinions. Um, and like I was saying before, outside of work, I'm a children's rights activist. And one of the rights is that young people, children and young people have the right to be heard and for their views to be taken seriously. And the second part is what kind of shocks me because that's obviously always breached, in my opinion, by the government um, because young people aren't taken seriously. But then I think that's where um, young people should change that narrative and get involved and speak up and where they feel like they're not supported um just just making your voice and opinion heard is is something that's really important i think uh thank you so much for sharing that uh, and it's actually extremely concerning that you know it is like that and especially during a pandemic to even feel that you weren't being listened to. And it's true because a lot of um, students couldn't actually go into their les lecture lectures. And my brother's, he was at uni as well. And that, that was definitely a struggle. It's like, there wasn't really anything done. And you just had to deal with it. And yeah, your problems are just as important and you should be equally heard and your problems need to be taken seriously. So doing things like this will also help, um, you know, just raise awareness and your voice does matter. Okay, so I go by Poet RS, and um, I'm going to take you on a little journey. I used to watch cartoons as a child, using it as a means of escape, no escape rope. You see, my crystal was a maze. Fantasy entertainment entertaining the entity in me because I wasn't old enough for what reality shows. You see, my reality showed that I was just a GMO product in an environment of pain. And every cartoon watched was an IV drip to my veins. There were no pinky in the brain dreams, no Ed, Ed and Eddie schemes. Picture the scene that I've seen. Broken homes broke down my outer core. My self-worth was shaggy. And I didn't care much for what Scooby do because I had to be scrappy in order to fight for scraps. You see, I was more in tune with my vulture than my culture, but that's what happens when you scavenge for survival. Chasing my ambition to just live was like Tom and Jerry. But just like Tom, I always felt deflated, defeated. This state of living should not be a state of living. But as a child growing up, I only ever saw what was in front of me. They say eyes are the windows to the soul. 
Look into my eyes back then and all you saw was TV static. Next to a TV screen that made like beams and took me to places where recess was more than just break time. More than just playtime. Does that mean I'm a loony tune and a maniac for thinking that reality was false? That cartoons made sense? I was so in tune to the tune of tunes that cartoon network to veil over my eyes. Depression swiped right and side swiped my inner head until my inner head shape stretched out. Hey Arnold. But I was still looking for that hey poet. From anyone with a heartbeat. But you can't get that from the deceased. So I turned to DC because I couldn't bear to marvel at me. I'm boiling over. I couldn't find myself in the steam. Where's my self-esteem? I felt like Chucky from Rugrats. And not because I had rats in my rug. You see, I was so low when I was so low. The cartoons are appealing. Feeding my inner demons with fruity thoughts when I'm sleeping. Bananas in pyjamas. They're coming down the stairs. Bananas in pyjamas. Reality, I'm really scared. And I don't know how to break out. Took breaks in other people's home because I couldn't stand the breakage of my own home. Using my oven as more than just cooking. It was my central heating. I wasn't a vegan by choices because I couldn't afford cow and chicken. Remember, I had to scrape for scraps and blink back every tear when I was in a tailspin. How do you control what you don't know? If you ever decided to talk to me, I'd reciprocate that with anger. Batman, Flintstones like pebbles, I'll bedrock man's head till I bam bam. Pressure press my points, that pressure points, the release was out of reach. I wanted to reverse grudge and crawl into the TV screen. The darkness was overwhelming. You see, my freedom scattered like sesame seeds, whereas Sesame Street with Elmo was feeling more like Elm Street with Freddy, so closing my eyes wasn't an option. No more sinking into the sofa. Get out. It's not obscure for you to be a captain, planet, and know that you have the ring of love all along instead of all alone. Those cartoons don't need you. They never watched you in the first place. Was it worth that square vision that tried to pop eyes? You don't even like spinach. But just know that the TV's finished. You don't have to see cartoons in the same way people see reality shows. Who cared what your reality showed? you got more options than problems. Change the narrative. Be the narrator, not the character. Because once they stop drawing the characters, there'll be no more cartoons. And you'll still be there. Because that's what your reality shows. Thank you. Okay, so this next one is about mental health. It's, it's quite close to my chest. Um, and it's related to Winnie the Pooh. I used to watch Winnie the Pooh as a child, and um, a lot of the characters in Winnie the Pooh. I didn't know this because I was like young and dumb, but like all the characters relate to different mental health disorders. So this piece is called "A Hundred Acres in My Mind." Deep in the hundred a co woods, where Christopher Robin plays. The awareness of mental health is present in Christopher's childhood days. So what does mental health mean to you? Are we crazy because you couldn't latch onto our craze? Generalize as a stereotype from lack of understanding and you call us crazy? To call someone crazy would signify ignorance because you don't understand that person's dilemma. However, if you understood the dilemma of that person, would that mean you are now crazy? I'll let the honeycomb soak in a jar for a while. You see, anyone can have disorders. That doesn't mean they're in a disorder. I've known calmness and calamity, chaos and stillness. I've traveled a hundred acres in my mind and that was just my baby steps. I've learned to throw away negative comments like a woodchuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. However, I'm still battling your sounds of deforestation. And you would rather see my Winnie the Pooh as fecal matter, but the things that make me different are the things that make me, me. Mental health travels deeper than a hundred acre woods. The aches would alone be able to shake the woods. How would you know? How would you cope? If mental health wasn't just stuck in your mental, but transcending into life's caricature and each character of life is a sound bite, so bite the sound and light the flame and don't forget my honey, honey. Like a wise old owl said, if the string breaks, then we try another piece of string. 
But what if I only had one string left and I need to hold on to it so I string my collective stability together like I'm trying to string words within these sentences. My dyslexia can't call an Alexa or chat to Siri because my short-term memory loss means at times my memory's lost. But when society looks at you as a wise old owl, they expect for you to know more than an elephant. Don't think that the difficulty in interpreting words makes you less of an intellectual. Dyslexia doesn't equal loss of intelligence. And sometimes there's more education in the word silence than you could ever speak on. Those that speak with ignorant minds are only passing on ignorant words. So we need to bounce on them like Tigger and bring Tony the Tiger for reinforcement to keep their word frosties. They need to call off. And don't wave bye-bye at his coldness because he is bipolar. His mood swings like a child in a playground. But can you blame the rapid nature when the nurturing of mental health on youthful minds isn't moving fast enough? So when Tigger sings, I'm the only one with a solitary smile. Did it ever occur to you that even with his friends by his side, he still feels like he's alone? And his ADHD may be a cry for attention, but you would rather focus on a disorder and claim he's disorderly in a world where he can't keep still because he hasn't found a place to sit in stillness. So what does mental health mean to you again? You pick apart the piglet and intrude into his intrusive thoughts and blame him for being worried. You see, burglary of the mind is a crime. And now he must avoid situations through nervousness. So he st 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 stutters his words because he's af f f afraid of giving you the full picture. Apply intenses to the tension. Missing out on the fact that even the smallest of friends can be enormously helpful because a little consideration, a little help for others. Well, that makes all the difference. So I will ask you again, what does mental health mean to you? Pay attention to the signs. Because sometimes the reality doesn't match up to the internal and it feels like Eeyore is giving you that donkey punch because people don't pay any attention. No one ever does. It's that, type, it's that type of lonesomeness that can lead to low thoughts and low spirits where you think you're pathetic. The epitome of sorrow. What makes you think anything's the matter? Why is he so sad? It's questions like that which make me angry, not sad, because you throw a stick in the mud and your stigma mugs all sense of mental health credibility and you claim he's the jackass? I'm not lost for I know where I am. However, where I am may be lost, yet I always get to where I'm going by walking away from where I've been. Mental awareness needs to be more aware than the now. Have you ever been locked up or locked down inside your mind? You see, in London, we call that tier five. Hearing screams as lullabies. And your only response is to scream back. Chubby little cubby or stuff with fluff sounds good to the ear of the limerick rhymer. But that fluff is not allowing him to move through his mind with enchanted freedom. It's more like a pillowcase to pillowcase the notion that Christopher Robin the way towards healing. Is your understanding of our abilities limited? Well, trust me, I know that my ability is limitless. And I won't have to order my disorders and play with them like Christopher Robin. I'm more like build a bear when I build this bear up and rise out of the muddy or stigma. And I will never, ever, ever have to say, oh, bother. Because I'm aware of my mental health. Question is, how aware are you? Thank you. Took in my cage and I put put it away. I took all my ways and I stuck by what was at stake. I wasn't to be, I wasn't to choose what was right. It wasn't to be, it wasn't to see more. So right, we're running away, running down south. Help me, oh, situation so out of control. Running away, you cannot hide all of your lies. Or come and die with you, no. Someone is oh so true. Back in, oh no, won't say it again. Resentment is. 
wanna take or destroy Shouldn't change, I can't take it as the day Carry me forward, make me pray Give me mercy, it's not okay no. So I don't know what to say I don't know what's in front of me Cause I can't say words I will be but I can pray for destiny mm -hmm. oh, Taking me on, taking me down mm -hmm. My indiscretion doesn't mean I don't know what I'm saying I don't know how I'm playing I know which way I'm taking I know that I will make it No, no Destruction is not an option No, no Make my future be what I want No, no All the answers are in my questions No, no Not so much, we're just guessing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just guessing Thank you. Um, this next song is out, so if you like it, it means you can actually stream it. Um, and it's called Sugar Honey Kisses. Yeah. This one came out in June, my birthday month, on my birthday. Oh, my God, Gemini gang. <laughs> um, okay. Away from games, away from you, away from this now All I really wanted was a ch 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 chance to let you know All I really wanted was a ch 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 chance to let you know All I really wanted was a ch 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 chance to let you know To let you know Sure only gives us forever Sure only get it both Sure only gives us forever let you know, surely I guess it's forever. Surely get a boat. Surely, surely, surely I guess it's forever. Surely get a boat. Surely I guess it's forever. I let you know, surely I guess it's forever. Surely get a boat. Surely, that's enough. Sitting by the corner, fatal. Pass me by. What's your type? Pass me here. Sit back down, I wanna get to know you. Stop. That's enough. That's what love is. That's what's happened. You want it your way. You want it all. I'm gonna show ya. Surely it is forever. Surely getting full. Surely it is forever. I'll let you know. Surely it is forever. Surely getting full. Surely. Surely. Surely it is forever. Surely getting full. Surely it is a breakfast. I'll let you know. 
She run the business for reference She run the item for heart That's enough That's enough That's enough That's enough
I'm going to be performing a couple tracks from my new EP called BRB. I go by the name of Laughter. If you catch on to the hook, sing along, let's enjoy. Lockdown's been long, and I'm just excited to perform actually in front of some people right now. <laughs> This first one's called BRB. BRB, babe, check my status. Check my status, check my status. BRB, babe, check my status. I'm not home. BRB, babe, no, 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 don't call my phone. BRB, babe, I'm perfectly fine on my own. BRB, I'm feeling free, I'm in my zone. BRB, babe, BRB, BRB. BRB, babe, BRB, BRB. PRP, babe, PRP, 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 babe. I'll be, I'll be, it's simple, one, one of those days. days, I don't want to talk, that's just that, I'm fully zoned out, out in space, I'm floating round, I don't want to face no one's face, and I don't want to catch no case, so give me my space, okay, I don't want to be on no app, track and trace, I'm offline, mellow, I'm far away, I'm not even thinking straight, I'm just trying to insulate, reinvigorate, I don't want to entertain no one, and no, I can't facilitate, so give me a break, I'm off today, allow me, I'm sick of you all, I'm trying to incubate, be right back, I'm free like that. I don't need no slack. I won't email back. I got things to do. You can't make me lose. Can't you see I'm not in a mood? Or you move my don't be rude. BRB, babe, check my status. I'm not home. BRB, babe, no, 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 don't call my phone. BRB, babe, I'm perfectly fine on my own. BRB, I'm feeling free, I'm in my zone. BRB, babe, BRB, BRB. BRB, babe, BRB, BRB. BRB, babe, BRB, BRB. BRB, babe. I said be right back, I'm stepping away Cause I'm trying to heal on my feet like that Hex wanna beat like rap, you ain't in my league I'm on it, you bums don't see it like that Why do you think that I speak so firm? You still have so much now, I'm so burned Sometimes in life you gotta do you Put you first and take a U-turn I was calm till I piece those facts and I learned I just clean my dust from germs Can't with you, you're waiting, who are you fam? I will tread on worms I was on a 279 bus driving through Tottenham So don't disturb, I'm writing words Covid high alert Be your beat, babe, check my status, I'm not home BRB, babe, no, 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 don't call my phone BRB, babe, I'm perfectly fine on my own BRB, I'm feeling free, I'm in my zone BRB, babe, BRB, BRB, say it Say it Let's go BRB, babe, BRB, BRB BRB, babe Let's go, I go by the name of Laughter But you know what? I think we should have some fun now and just turn it up some more. I'm going to give you one more track. I need some energy in the room. I can't see you guys, which sucks, but it's all good. I hope you're still enjoying it. Are we still in the building right now? All right, sick, sick. So we're still here. This next one's called What's Going On. Like I said, all these tracks are taken off my new EP, BRB EP. Big up Thrive LDN for this. And let's just get straight into this next vibe. Yeah. It's been a while. I've been making beats, I've been written tunes, but I've got EPs. I don't want to compete, but I'm not complete. So this case ain't closed, when I keep it brief. I don't want to get deep, but it will get deep. Crept on who, you can't creep on me. I can crept on you, then I crept protect my shoes. Put him on blast, heard that boom, then he went straight under. Crept's gone six foot deep, what a little chief. Stupid chief. What's going on, family? What's, what's going on? What's going on, Famalam? What's, what's going on? Where you gone, Famalam? Where, where you gone? Where you gone, Famalam? Where, where you gone? Back your G's. I back your G's. Back your G's. I back your G's. 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 I'm so gifted, we're all of our awards uplifted. I don't need no approval, just a witness. Burst your bubble, I just need forgiveness. I don't need no love or sickness. Same love will aim at me when I'm distant. When I turn my back, it's instant, no petitions. 
Who's gonna save you? No one listens. I got ambition and I'm driven. I got a big fat brain that I live in. I got a big mind state I can fit in. Can't keep my style, there's no addition. I love roadblocks, collisions, run them over, they go miss it. What's, what's going, going on, on family? What's, 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 what's going on? Say it, say it. What's What's going on? I need that. Where you gone, family? I'm where? Where you gone? Say it. Where you gone, family? I'm where? Where you gone? Don't be shy. Back your G's. 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 Oli, oli, oli. I say oli, oli, oli. When I say five, you say LDN. Five, five. I go by the name of Lofta. Well, let's get on with the discussion. And today's question was actually put together by the young people who helped develop this program, which is, I think, really important. And so, as I said, just to remind you, what we're going to be discussing is how we build a culture of tolerance, equality, and anti-discrimination within London and help to, you know, kind of further our connections and build community. So I'm going to just start off, actually, because I think those are quite sort of big topics, umbrella topics, um, I want to start by getting kind of everybody on the panel's take on how you'd actually define those topics, because I think it helps. You kind of hear anti-discrimination, you hear tolerance, you hear equality. These can kind of descend into the field of kind of jargon and buzzwords. So I want to understand what those things mean to you. So why don't we start with you, Sam, if you could just kind of give us a bit of an explainer. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for just highlighting, I guess, the limits of language. I think there is something in... Um, the conversations around liberation and seeking liberation, where we can fall short with the language that we use. Um, I think it's Maggie Nelson who says, it's idle to fault a net for having holes. Yeah, we will always want to get at something in particular, but not necessarily be able to do that with the means of language. We, we might not be able to speak to what we really intend to. And I guess with that, I just going back to the question of the language of tolerance, there's something in that that sets a limitation for me um, in that question. I, I don't think that we should be seeking tolerance. I think that we should be seeking um, liberation, um, a fuller humanity, cultures of love. Um, and within that, I think, is the inclusion of, I guess, anti-discrimination. But more specifically, if we're trying to use language in closer proximity to get to what we're really talking about, is moving away from anti-blackness, Islamophobia, racialization of Muslims, you know, I, I think we could be doing more to speak to what the specific oppressions are um, and the structures of oppression that we're living in. Yeah, I think that's really important. I think a lot of the conversations that have been had, certainly in the past year and certainly since last summer after the Black Lives Matter protests, is that, and this is something that I've kind of done in my writing as well. I wrote this essay, White, and it talks about sometimes the limits of language and how words can very quickly kind of take hold and become widespread, but then nobody really knows what they mean. And the meaning gets, you know, people mean different things. So I think it's really important for us to all just kind of get clear as kind of a starting point, what we all mean. What, how, how would you interpret those terms, Jonas? Firstly, with equality, in my opinion, equality is treating everybody equally, but you need to think about what that person needs because everybody needs something different. For example, one of my close, I'm not going to say his name, he won't appreciate me saying it, but one of my best friends, he's dyslexic, right? And I remember in ITGCSE, I'm not going to lie, of course, when I, was, when I was 14, 15, in IT lessons, you know what boys do, we're going to turn each other's computers off and mess around, play games, all that kind of stuff, right? So our teacher would always be giving him help. And I'd be sitting there, and obviously I'd play games once in a while, but I'd also want to get my GCSEs, right? So I'd be waiting for Mr. Come to help me. And then when she's always with him, but then he's messing around, I tell him, why are you messing around all the time when Mrs. giving you the most help out of everybody? But in the back of my mind, I knew that he needed it more because of, unfortunately, what's going on for him. So she came and gave me help, but he needed more than most of us. 
So for me, that's what a quality is because everybody needs different things. When I was 15, I needed something. When I was 17, I needed something different. When I was 19, I now need something different. So all of that is important. And then in regards to tolerance, it's me understanding that he needs that and I need to accept him for who he is. And I always did. I always did. That's why me and him are tight to this day. I and mean, I never, ever will not be tight with him because he's my brother, all right? So I love what everyone is saying. I love what you talk about your use of the word or use of language. I always have this strong visceral response to the word tolerance because I don't want to be tolerated. I want to be erased, I like embraced. I want to be seen in spaces and I want people to be able to not look at equality and anti-discrimination as, as buzzwords, but actually doing words. You know, we can't say, I'm working on a production at the moment now, actually. And uh, everyone's always talking about, you know, we love diversity and we're anti-discriminatory. But, you know, when something is presented to you about one of the many intersections of my identity, it's, you know, they freeze because it's got to the point now, especially from the conversation of last year or this year even, or, you know, I've been organising and running campaigns for years on these type of stuff. But it comes to, there's a wall when it comes to, okay, we're using these words now. And what do these actually mean? We don't know. And we don't know what they mean in action. I know what they mean in action. But, you know, a lot of people around are just using certain words like tolerance and like acceptance or equality when actually what we want is equity. What we was talking about before is equity. Like we should throw words like equality in the bin if it just means that people aren't going to be held to account in order to, you know, make places safe for all of us. I think something that I find particularly, and I've grown up in London my entire life. I've lived here since I was five. And I often think, oh my God, moving to London, especially as an adult, must be really difficult. Because there are even times where I have felt lonely and I have felt a lack of community around me. And I think I've worked really hard to kind of foster that sense of community. But, you know, I think that can be something that's really challenging to find all over the world, but especially in bigger cities like London. And also for younger people, when you haven't kind of been through all these stages of life, I think one of the reasons that I've kind of found a bit of community now is because I have become a bit older and I've kind of had more time to build one. But what, you know, I'd love to know, what do you think, what do you think the main challenges are to finding community and building community and to kind of having that interdependence between us within uh, kind of within modern society are? What, what does everyone think? Yeah, for sure. I think there's a lot of depth to this issue that we can get into. I, I, I'm... I think there's a few things that I'd like to name here. One is, is that we, we reinforce what we witness and what we're exposed to, right? We are repeatedly in conditions um, that perpetuate individualism, ruthless individualism. We live in a capitalist yeah. society which encourage us, encourages us all to um, adopt the, the myth of survival of the fittest, you know? Um, and with that, means that we inadvertently see others as a threat to us, okay? Um, of course, we're going to do that because these are the conditions that we are in. So we learn to do that and we perpetuate those behaviors. We're encouraged to do we that. haven't, yeah, and we haven't really witnessed loving community. It's actually very rare that we've been part of loving communities that are really practiced in interdependence, in um, being able to move away from ruthless individualism, okay? I think that we can think about this in the context of systemic whiteness too, that if, we've, if we recognize this as a structural issue, not an individual one, how it operates within every single one of us, yeah? The most extreme example, we have had Tony Sewell come up as a black man telling us that institutional racism doesn't exist, okay? And, and this is it's a very painful reality, but we are all trying to survive, okay? And I think it's Bell Hooks that talks about this means of survival means that often we can, the oppressed people can become oppressors. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is a really painful and difficult thing to speak to in our own communities because we don't, when we are already in place, places of oppression, to go out and call our own as bad is a very, you know, of course we're all very reluctant to do that. Um, and I want to hear your experiences. And because I, when I think, I think the first, I said this, like it was a couple of months ago and I, uh, I think I was, you know, I had like a book out. Or I, I, I don't know what it was, but I was just dealing with a lot in a, in a mm -hmm. kind of professional way. And I remember for the first time reflecting, thinking, oh my God, I'm so glad I have the community that I have. I think my friends were also doing really cool things, like professional contacts. And I just suddenly felt 
this moment, I think it was kind of the first time in my life that I'd really thought, I was like, oh, I have a community. I have people around me. Um, and that was a really beautiful thing. And I think I've found that a lot through my work, uh, mm. through my work as a writer and the people that I've met within publishing, within media. And I've met other writers kind of doing similar things to me and then their friends and they're their friends of friends. So I've been really lucky to find that through my work. Um, but I'd love to know, you know, what communities do you guys consider yourselves to be part of that have really kind of helped you on your journey and continue to help you? Mm. Why don't we start with you, Kelsey? Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I think I'm a bit similar to you where like my, my most, the communities that hold me the strongest probably came about through work. So I've done a lot of campaigning with the pay outreach team, but also with other kind of black and brown organisations. And they are sometimes, they are places probably where I've had the most conflict but also at the same time have embraced my many identities for what they are when they see it come out, especially as it comes out in my work. I think it's funny because your initial question or the question before was like, why is it so difficult to find communities? When I look at the intersections of my life, so I'm like a black, queer, working class person who's also neurodivergent, like, and I can go and seek those communities, but sometimes with this whole individualistic nature of communities it's not really sustainable for my life to just go I'm going to go with you guys because you tick this box and you tick that box um but I find the, the the places that can sometimes accept me for who I am and also that I feel most supported has probably come through work and in this new digital age one of the things that I've kind of explored in the past year with my research, like, you know, Gen Z millennials are finding this whole community online and are considered like a global identity and seeing how, how so much of my community has come off from the internet or digital spaces um, has been something that's managed to, where I've managed to find some sort of community. However, at the same time, I always challenge when we talk about the black community or, you know, any form of community to always pluralize it because like there isn't one black community, there isn't one queer community. There's like so many different subsections of every single protected characteristic. And like we must keep talking about those nuances in order to find a place that can that can house all of us, all of ourselves. If that makes sense. I love that specific specificity. And I feel like that's definitely something I'm going to adopt because I think I find myself saying the black community, but you're completely right. There are multiple black communities. And also, you know, something that I do challenge is when people assume that whatever community it is, that we all kind of have a homogenous, you know, school of thought. So I, I did an event a couple of, uh, like last week, where we were talking about um, kind of pay inequality, ethnicity and pay inequality. Mm -hmm. And somebody, you know, in the audience asked a question, or what would you say if, you know, a black woman who's risen to the top and is a CEO says that she doesn't believe in kind of gender discrimination? And I was like, I was like, that's kind of, you know, obviously I would challenge it, but just because she's black doesn't mean that she's going to think the same thing that I think. Just because she's a black woman doesn't mean that she's going to think the same thing that I think as a result of my identity and a result of my gender and my race. So I think it's really important that we understand the kind of plurality of these different communities and the fact that there isn't, you know, one you know view one you know perspective from people who occupy those spaces so I love that you've brought that up um how about you Jonas one of my quotes let me start off one of my quotes are every day should be seen as a step closer to wherever you want to be in life and for me personally I'm going to tell you the truth in school I got in trouble quite a lot and I get cussed quite a lot so I'd have to obviously say oh I cussed them back and obviously I'd do it worse so that I, it wouldn't come back. But then I got the reputation of, of a bully because I wanted to back myself. And I grew up in a single parent household with my mother, but my grandmother did live with me until I was in year eight. But my mum sent me to a mentoring organization called the 100 Black Men of London. So right there, I, cause I used to get called Blick a lot, a lot of dark skin jokes, that kind of stuff. Right? I got a lot of colorism. It was like, when I went in there, it was like, nah, being black is lit. So it was like, wow. Everybody, I've never been called Blick here once because I used to think to myself every day, hopefully today I don't get called Blick. And I actually had, like, I used to count, oh, it's been three days and stuff like that. But at the 100 Black Men of London, we're all a family and we're all supporting each other and all that kind of stuff. And that's where I really learned the fact that as a community, we need to become together more because so many of us want to do different things. But as you said there, as I just learned on this panel, see, I'm learning stuff on this panel there's different subsections of our community and most communities in the protected characteristics. Hi guys, uh, my name's Sunny Day. 
And I would like to invite you all to close your eyes. Um, that probably means put your phones down. Love you. This is for you. Um, I think it's very rare that we're present. And um, this is called balance. This life is all about balance. Sometimes you feel high. Sometimes you feel a little low. There's beauty in falling. Being uncertain but still going with the flow. Keep your head up, it's gonna be okay. You're on the path to discovering who you are. You never know what's coming your way. Remember where it is you started from. Because it can't shine without a little rain You can't smile without a little pain Do right without a little wrong What makes you weak can also make you strong The past is done, the future's yet to come. So try your best to be present now. <sighs> and things will change, they never stay the same. Once you figure out the why, you learn how. So keep your head up, it's gonna be okay. You're on the path to discovering who you are. You never know what's coming your way. Remember where it is you started from, because it can't shine without a little rain. You can't smile without a little pain. Do right without a little wrong. What makes you weak can also make you strong. It's all about balance. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so, thank you. The next piece is uh, called, actually, I don't know if it's got a name. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'll just start, yeah. Okay. There's a reason for every soul manifesting at our door. A familiar knock, as if they've been here once or several times before. We gaze through the hole, undo our locks, welcoming them home. As they enter, they begin to present us with lessons, testing how far we've grown. Although may, they may mirror to us our deepest fears, they may also educate us in love we have yet known. We attach our emotion to the experience when some are only brief visitors with no intention of lingering long. As the night turns to day, to persuade them to stay would be selfish, as their work may be done. We release our doors latch, observing their silhouette as they depart into the morning sun. The truest form of love for another is letting go. We cannot control what's unknown. Even if we believe we found a diamond amongst, amongst a plethora of stones. Thank you.
Hi guys, I am Sandra, I'm a Kiki stage name, and I actually wrote two new pieces for you guys. Exclusive, exclusive. Listen, so um, this first piece that I'm doing is called Sometimes, Some Days. Sometimes the night falls as the, as the morning sets and tears fill up like stars on a black night sky. They ask you, what's wrong? But the pain freezes your heart. You have known this pain for too long. You don't even know what to say anymore. At least not today. Because yesterday, the night fell. And the pain came down like heavy rains. Hit you like thunderstorms. Had you rocking like a small boat on a stormy sea. You wasn't sure if you were going to make it. And they don't know that you were begging God to let you go. Let you slide into heaven. You feel alone. And life has been feeling like hell lately. You feel alone. But there is a light that carries you on. And maybe you don't have to explain. Just the fact that you're standing here in this body, breathing in this life, is enough for us. And I want to thank you for choosing to stay. See, you are not alone and somebody somewhere will miss you because somebody somewhere will always think of you. Your smile, your laugh, the way you shine different to everybody else. You are not alone and somebody somewhere will always think of you. Somebody, somewhere, will always miss you. And even if you don't see it, the sun still shines. And maybe one day you will see that the sun still shines. You see, you are not alone. And somebody, somewhere, is always thinking of you, you are not alone. Thank you. Thank you. That's exclusive, fresh off the page. We got another one for you guys. Um, this one actually isn't titled yet, because it's that fresh. But um, here we go. You must forge your own freedom, on paper, on film. You must write your own story, own it, reframe it. You must rewrite that story. English broken, reframed. You in the middle, sentences scattered, shattered. You in the middle. Freedom is your own picking of words, of softness, of compassion. Freedom is your own picking of compassion for your body, for your soul, for your skin. Freedom is your own picking for your blackness. The sweetest juice comes from the darkest fruit and somehow the darkest pain bears the sweetest light. Every day I shred from my past. Every morning I run from its feelings. Sometimes it catches me by midday, but still I prepare my shoes by the door with the hope that maybe tomorrow I may run another mile to the north. The stars are waiting for me to lay amongst them. 
It's not just a dream, it's fate. I think I designed it from another time, from another home, from another me. I'm running to catch up with myself. I am breaking and rebuilding myself. I'm carving myself from stone. And I think that maybe these are not just scars. I think they are stars guiding me back home, back to me, back to who I really am. Thank you. So, how would you, obviously, because we're aware, obviously, we started a conversation with this, that men do struggle to speak out about mental health, etc., and on their own feelings, emotions, so how would, how do you personally go about this when you are speaking one-to-one -one with your own people, or your people in general, your male friends in general, about just feeling like it's okay to open up, how can we overcome that challenge specifically, you know? Do you know what, I think it's about vulnerability. So I try to make that one of my values or one of the things that I um, I kind of bring to the world. Like, you know, it's about being vulnerable. Like, at the same time, you've got to be careful who you tell information and what you say. But, um, yeah, I'll try and, like, especially what I find is that when I go in to do a talk in a school, for example, when I've basically kind of bared my soul on screen in a film or in my presentation, usually you'll get a young person come up to you after and say, you really spoke to me. I want to tell you everything now. And then in which case you have to kind of say, well, I'm not here every day. Here's a safeguard and lead, etc." But in that time, what I find is being vulnerable is what helps the young person to say, okay, it's, like, it's all right to talk because this person I've got some kind of respect for, they've achieved a certain thing and they're here telling me about their mistakes or about their feelings that maybe it's all right for me to talk about it. Um, and so I think we need more spaces like that. And I think, like for example, the other day I posted a video, I think even last Thursday or Friday on Instagram, where I was just saying like, you know, I've been in a season where I've had lots of different hurdles that I've had to overcome. And as a, as a man, like that is usually, you know, I've been on a good path for a few years, that's draining. It, like my endurance, like my starting to affect the way that I think about things. And I want to be, honest because I know that yes my future is you know there's certain things in the pipeline that I know are going to be a blessing but to some people you need to see that don't just always show the nice stuff sometimes you need to see there's a bit of a struggle attached to this journey and every day isn't just you know you're meeting this person and this achievement and this talk and that so that vulnerability is 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 really important I think when you're trying to open that space for a young person to be honest about how they feel. In regards to your um, this being a CEO and the founder of Aviad how do you feel like, how important do you feel organisations like this are needed in communities to provide that community presence? Yeah, definitely. Like my organisation is one of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of organisations in the UK that do great work. And each of us aren't kind of playing a particular role and we, we have to be part of the joint approach that goes into helping a young person to to elevate and to you know know themselves and to seek opportunities and progress etc and and you know essentially kind of learn who they are so it's it's very important because there's no way that m one organization can solve the problems of every young person and each organization is going to have a different perspective a different kind of way of delivering what they do and that's why it's important for us to know that person does that, that person does that, young person is in the center of it, and you're just constantly trying to pathway young people to different things. Someone might want to work with me because I make films, but then there may be another organization, like you were saying before about boxing. Maybe the young person's not into box, uh, films or boxing, and so we go to someone else's, and I think that that's where that all these organizations, like this, it's amazing the work that's going on, and it just needs to be funded multi-year. It can't just be one-off. And, and we need sustainable business models that allow us to kind of yeah, keep doing this for young people so that they aren't kind of let down when we don't have funding for years to come, you know? 100%, bro. I don't think you could have said it better. I think you need varieties. Not everyone likes the same thing. So yeah. young people need options and they need to be try to learn things and try things. And if they don't like them, given more options. And 100%. there's not enough of them out there nowadays. So just to develop a bit more on being the CEO of Aviad, mm -hmm. what barriers would you say 
you're currently faced or you feel you will face in the future with that organization? Do you know what? You do? To be honest, one of the biggest barriers is self-belief. A lot of the time, you know, you can sometimes have imposter syndrome when you have ideas and stuff. And um, like, for example, I just direct wrote, uh, writ, wrote, writ, wrote, I just writ, wrote my first short film and directed my first short film, um, which was commissioned by Enfield Council. It's going to come out in a few months. And um, at the beginning of the process, I was like, oh, I've produced previously, so I'm just going to produce. I'm just going to, you know, it's all right. And then I kind of like opportunity opened up for me to direct it and write it and I just kind of slowly talk myself out of it and then after a while you know I had this writer that kind of wasn't really fully getting what I wanted to do and I was like oh let me try it and in the process of trying it now I can say I'm a writer a director and I think that that initial kind of doubt that you can come sometimes have in yourself as a CEO or just as a visionary creative is the thing that you have to overcome. There's other barriers, there's systemic things, there's financial things, there's you know problem solving stuff. But fundamentally, if you believe in yourself, then you'll be resilient and push through or you'll learn to be resilient and push through these things. So yeah, I think that was my biggest hurdle. And it's a daily battle, you know, growing up and I always say to people, I didn't grow up with a lot of praise or accolades. I, you know, I got kicked out of school, left with basically no GCSEs, I didn't care. So now to have the complete polar opposite of that where almost everything you do has some kind of level of success or impact, you can sometimes continue to play on, oh, why are you here? You know, so you're learning to like, again, change your own internal narrative. That's, that's a big battle as a CEO, especially from my walk of life. A young person that may be involved in gang life, and, and sorry, let me, let me caveat that. Also, I also thought about retaliation. You know, my family, we were thinking, you know, and my family aren't from that life, but I'm the only son and my family, my family are angry. So you think about it. So I can only imagine a young person that has been spending the last four or five years of their life rolling around with the man, them growing up with certain people and then they get stabbed. And then you're trying to tell me don't ride out on my man. That is, I can only imagine because the only reason I said I don't want to do it is because it would mean I'm stepping into their world. If you're already in that world, it's difficult. Um, I feel like in those moments, it's down to the family to be positive influences on them. Um, f what helped me was to isolate myself and to limit the amount of voices that were in my head because I think I had to make a very strong conscious choice that, yeah, people are going to call me whatever they're going to call me because I'm not going to try and find these boys and ride out on them. But, you know, 10 years later, I'm happy, I'm at peace, no one's looking for me. Whereas if I'd gone and done something, I could have been in jail, I could have been dead, I could have had, you know, people looking for me every day, right? So you need positive people around you. You need the space to think about things like objectively and kind of say, nah, actually, I'm, I'm alive. That's what I thought. I was like, I'm alive, I've got another chance. But as I said, I, I can only say that from my perspective. Young people, we just need, they, they need that positive influence. There's, low, I think, uh, is it... Um, Oasis that go into schools, uh, into prison, uh, into hospitals, I think, and they're in like crisis wards. So people like that, you need more of that going into like that moment of crisis, that moment where a young person is at a tipping point where they're actually thinking about their options. You need more people at that point and that can actually give them tangible things in their hand. Because otherwise we know that it just comes like, you know, tit for tat and it's long. So that's what I would say. Mm, great answer, bro. Thank you. So... Yeah, just to take a quick step back as well. In regards to mental health, when do you feel like this conversation should start being had with young people? Start? That should be like, that's primary school, man. Like, I think just even, um, even things like emotional intelligence, like there's studies that talk about the, the value of emotional intelligence for, from a very, very young. So I think that primary school should be empowered with more resources to start these conversations early because then that's embedded into the foundation of that young person that they know it's okay to talk about things. If something happens at home, then they feel like, actually, do you know what? Um, I can go to my teacher or this is the designated safeguard and lead or whatever. You need that kind of embedded into young people and then it makes it easier as they get older, in my opinion, for them to become more open you know, I think if you're older and you haven't really had that as part of your life, then it's completely alien to talk about your feelings. Right. I know I know it was a big struggle for me, even when you get into relationships to talk to your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whatever about how you feel. If you're not used to that at home, then 
being in a relationship, you kind of just say, no, nah, I'm upset. And I used to have this kind of like this emergency self-protection button when I'd get annoyed with my, with my partner, press that button rather than talking about it. But that doesn't help me to move forward. So it needs to be from young, needs to be. So in addition to that, saying that, would you go as far as saying it should be included in the actual education system? 100%. But whether that happens or not is a different issue. I think, you know, you, 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 you have a... Um, yeah, you, you, you've, you've got an education system that is, in my opinion, quite archaic. It's not fit for purpose all the time. And you've almost got this kind of one-size-fits-all approach to young people, which isn't really fair to them. And it's setting up a lot of young people to fail. So there is a complete over overhaul, in my opinion, of things that need to happen in the education system. But in my opinion, you know, I don't know if that's going to happen in my lifetime. Um, and so therefore, that's why, back to your original question, that's why you need organisations that are doing you know, extracurricular activities and getting the support from school and local authority because top down, unfortunately, I don't know how easy it's going to be to change these things, you know, being honest. So just to follow on from the awesome question just before, um, trying to turn it the other way slightly. So people that work with young people, slightly worried about potentially they're not themselves. How would you recommend people start the conversation to check up on these people to see if they do want the support? Because obviously, as we've been discussing here, someone taking the first step is obviously the hardest. Any advice from experience, how you can help open people up and just say, look, if, if, if you need help, I'm here for you. Like, yeah, I think it, yeah, it goes back to what I said before about vulnerability. I think within reason, especially teachers, youth workers, I think sharing an element of your own journey to kind of say, this is some of the things that I've struggled with in, a, in an environment that, you know, again, you're not sharing your whole business with a young person. But, um, yeah, give, like again, back to role modelling and being vulnerable, it's, it's those things that if a young person can see that you as someone that I look up to doesn't always have things okay, like things are not always all right, I think that can help them to open up. Again, it has to be done in moderation and, and safely and stuff like that. But, yeah, I think that's, that's, the, that's the kind of foundation of it. That's how you, that's how you open up for young people to be, yeah, to, to talk about how they feel, basically. Yeah, thank you, 100%. I think, I think that you've answered that perfectly, if I'm entirely honest with you, bro. I think that's the one of the best ways you can really get a young person or someone that does look up to you or has some confidence in you to open up to you is to share some of your own experience in that same way because it shows them they can be comfortable having that conversation with you. And also getting other young people in the room as well. I think adults do this thing where we kind of like talk at young people a lot of the time. What's amazing about organisations like this is like you're a young person interviewing me. Do you know how many times I've been to a place that's like, yeah, well, you focused and it's an older person talking to me. It's just like, let's have conversations because us as young, well, not as young anymore, but young people in general, we, we have voices. And we're, we're, there's this, uh, this phrase that I learned a little while ago called adulting or adultism. Yeah, adultism. And it's just talking about how adults essentially will talk at children and, you know, how we kind of define what children should be doing. But I think, the, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think the more that you, 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 you literally hand young people the mic and say, what do you think? How should this situation be framed? Um, you know, even just giving them the space to kind of um, co-design you know, that's what, you know, I know the peer outreach team, they do that. Like even giving space to, to just co-design things really allows a young person to, to, to build that confidence and to, to open up and to have other peers that you know that you can go to. So that's, you guys are doing it, you're modeling it. So, yeah. It starts back in school, a place I really hated. Uh, in school, I felt like rather than being supported to grow and develop, I was actually suffocated and oppressed by a system that didn't care for who I was. So I was lucky that in school I found creative writing as a lifeline. When I was sat in detention or isolation for some minor misdemeanor, um, I started writing rap and then poetry and then spoken word. And that gave me a real lifeline um, to feel sane and to accept my own thoughts and uh, discover who I was. But a lot of people aren't so lucky. And for many, many people, school is a really horrible experience that can leave people with permanent physical and mental scars. So... When it comes to the education system, I think it's fair to say 
that we're in need of some drastic changes before we kill off the youth's ambition, rendering a generation of failures. It's like we're balanced on the verge of greatness, but hanging by a thread, we're weightless. Capitalistic daggers, how we take this. Generic reprogramming of our homeostasis. Everybody's baited by the profits of a day shift, but this business is basest and the money is contagious. So we quarantine ourselves in metaphorical cages, rats chasing our tails, scavenging for wages, patience is waning, falling for raises. We're killing each other while trying to climb to a paycheck. But it's fine when the days and I'm writing and blazing a haze that I'm faded. Philosophically out of my depth like I waded too far into these pages. Like I pained it with what I think, stained it with the ink. Can you believe we're on the brink of evolutionary supremacy? In the same millennia, we developed enough weaponry and hereditary tendencies to destroy the planet's legacy forever. See, technology encompasses your energy. And our species has come so far, chasing a dream we'll never see. If we continue to threaten the world with nuclear weaponry, I have to scream, tell them, G. This should be elementary, not secondary school to our thoughts, but it's cool now we've got laws, schools and courts, more concerned with the commodities we're bought and the values we're taught. We're all flawed and warped, bored and poor, wanting more and more. I think it's historically obvious. Subliminal hypocrisy doesn't bother us. Humankind's never been so abominably conscious. Not abominably, because we're doing anything abominable, except for the guns, but bombing makes peace, so we're bombing them all. I'm begging you, Donald, not to build a wall. You're nothing more than a frolicking fool. But I say inspiration is a pyramid. So listen close, follow the limerick with him at the top. The only thing dripping off is syphilis. It's ridiculous. How was a man with this level of ignorance allowed to sit there claiming power and influence? Shut up with your bigoted views. Get off the news. He's a prude and particularly crude. We shouldn't have given him an audience to spout this shit to. But we do. So it's cool, I guess. Back to school where kids learn less of life's crucial tools. More that you must sit there, not speak and follow the rules. Not that that's anything new, but nowadays, young people have nothing to look up and aspire to. When the people at the top of our society exemplify everything that's wrong with today, in these hellish concepts we play, I guess this agonizing ignorance is blissful in a way, but not enough to float away. So I guess we just stay in our ends and don't learn. But I don't rate that. I can't sit there and take that. Still stuck in my hood like Stormzy and Ray Black. So far forward, but stuck so way back. So somebody please explain to me how it's not plain to see that something is going majorly wrong within our society. When the powers that be holding, or moreover controlling our values, those same groups of people who can orchestrate the building of enough chemical weapons to destroy a planet that houses 7.6 billion human residents. Yeah. Those same groups of people who can orchestrate the building of enough chemical weapons to destroy a planet that houses 7.6 billion human residents cannot create an education system to empower, teach cooperation and tackle the evils we've created. Hey, I guess everybody is still baited by the profits of a day shift, but this business is basest and the money is contagious. And doesn't it bother you? Doesn't it bother you that those people who are truly in power are never held accountable for their actions? They didn't create an education system to empower, just to teach division and fractions. Thank you. When I hear a ripple trickle, nature's symbol, the waterfall riddle, insides tingle. Why not live a little? Why not give a little? Why not breathe? Not just inhale, exhale, but breathe. My call to arms, your morning homage, my open palms hold your falling stars. Together we are perfect. You're yellow and blue, but green. Together we are perfect. Together we are perfect. Dancing when the sun comes up. You're giving me purpose. Take away my breath, hold up. Together we are learning. Teach me from the stark ground up. Wish I could see it's burning. I know, I know, it's 
I wish Earth could see the inner me when I'm bathing in her imagery. Listen, hear her singing G. No quartet or symphony. More raw like gets in sing for me. And I like all her similes. Please replace my need for intimacy with respect for your intricacy. This is simple to see. I'm not stepping on bees. I'm not trying to preach, but I'm begging you listen to her ecosystem because it's full of hidden wisdom. Need to treat her like a sister, but we burn her, leave her blistering. Barely watching inkling into her demise. This is if we only see in black and white skies, but it's black and white lies no way to disguise the dumb guy who denies climate change it's hard to explain if only flattery with words worked i'd show you a word's worth i could make your climate change because earth your pattern picture perfect with your patchwork pillow surface It's certain I'm asserted to serving your purpose There's nothing more worth it than saving the earth When it's bruised and it's hurt and it's raised from the dirt Time and time again There's nothing more worth it than saving the earth Cause it's plain that we hurt it Damn man it's planes that hurt it There's nothing more worth it than saving the earth Cause without it we're worthless It is our only inhabitable surface Together we are perfect Dancing when the sun comes up You're giving me purpose Take away my breath, hold up Together we are learning Teach me from the start ground up Watch your magnificence burning a resource that can cure depression for free Or enhance anyone's happiness exercising nature and sea But that don't make peas for pharmaceutical companies So I'm challenging these valium pushing freaks Pharmaceuticals cure everything please When the side effects may cause suicidal thoughts in young people How they're giving this to depressed teens is evil Especially when it's not a last resort But the NHS council only has half an hour a month to talk And they might not mention that nature's a tackle depression weapon But they're happy to invest in battle and inventing weapons Destroying our beautiful natural settings The only thing heaven sent Not that I believe But I'm screaming save the elements Sitting in these trees Playing in their reverence Here I am on a track now Narrating back the evidence Narrating back the evidence Narrating back the evidence It's so evident You are the foundation of all our art I could not rhyme all that thou art You are the foundation of all our art I could not rhyme all that thou art track is called Nature Baby. It's the single off my album for some reason, which is out now on all platforms. Shout out Tyler on the vocals, Little Emily, Artis on production, family. Thank you again to everyone at Fry for putting this event on. It has been tremendous. Big up to all the performers who've gone so far. I guess, you know, being young people, you talked a little bit about people starting to, to listen to young people. I feel like you know, young people, when they talk about climate change, you have, a, in some ways, a kind of moral authority. You can say, you know, this is our future. You know, Greta Thunberg talks about how she feels like older people have let her down and have, you know, not left her much prospect of a future kind of thing. So I think, yeah, but do you feel like, um, you know, as, as young people, do you feel like you have this a certain authority with people. Does that make sense? Um, no. <laughs> At the end of the day, like you, I feel like a lot of young people have been voicing their opinion for a long time, but it's down to decision makers to actually listen and put the solutions into place. There's only so much we can do. Um, we've just about got bank accounts. Do you know what I mean? So it's like the people in position and with power need to be actually taking on the recommendations that young people are coming up with because from the focus groups and stuff that I've done, there are, there are some amazing recommendations in turning London into a more sustainable city. Um, we're like the worst polluted city, I think, in Europe, which is quite shocking. And I think we need to do more about it for our own safety. I have asthma. I worry all the time um, about my health and the costs of my asthma pump. And there's so much that we worry about, but no one really takes into consideration 
da -da -da. <laughs> no one takes that into consideration um, when we're talking to decision makers and stuff like, you know, what are you actually going to do about it? Um, so in general, I feel like we, <clears throat> we have platforms where we can have our voices shared and we can network in that, but it, it's really down to, yeah, governments actually taking on what we say and large corporate organisations genuinely being held accountable. Mm, I'd absolutely agree with that. And I think, like, it's, just, it's exhausting all the time. It's so tiring to... On the one hand, you know, you're told that you're a child who's too optimistic and too idealistic and, you know, your visualisations of what world we can actually achieve and what future that is safer and more equitable and more sustainable that we want to dream of is, you know, so far off the table and it's stupid to think about. And on the other hand, we're constantly told that, you know, we're inspiring young people and, and we're changing the world and, you know, we're all going to be huge politicians and decision makers one day. And it's exhausting because none of that is leading to, you know, any actual fundamental yeah transformative change and I think then also on this idea of young people wanting a future I think for a really long time we have tried to appeal to that kind of side of the moral authority and I think in some cases it's worked um, in some cases it has gained young people a lot of access to spaces that we didn't have before um, on the other hand I think and, and whilst I'm guilty of kind of using that argument before I, I do think there are issues with constantly appealing to this kind of better future when you know for for climate change has been a reality not a far off this thing for the last 40 years and the kind of neglect and active erasure of so many activists across the world um, from so much of our history and so much of our politics um, whether that's on behalf of corporations or governments has really led to this idea that you know we're the first wave of young people saying anything it's only happened in the past few years it's all um, Greta Thunberg and Fridays for Future and you know it's not just us and if, if there weren't you know hundreds of thousands of activists and defenders who had come before us and who had fought so hard for that we wouldn't have that and I, so I don't think it's you know just on young people asking for this future it's about recognizing that climate change comes from all these discrepancies that we're struggling with now it's coming from all these inequities that are so baked into our systems and if we want to tackle that we have to recognize that everyone has an equal share in this future, in this better world, and we deserve that reality. It shouldn't just be young people having to advocate on it, basically. And like what you said, there was people before us who were young and they advocated, and they're still advocating, but they're not young, so now we're the new generation. It's like an ongoing thing, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's about time something actually happens, rather than just letting people talk, talk, talk. Like, you know, we're fed up of talking. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Action is necessary now. Yeah, and it's such a collective responsibility to advocate for climate change. Um, and that's, yeah, I totally agree. Like, we, everyone has a role to play in pushing for um, that element of justice and resolving the climate crisis. Um, and I think the only places where we risk going wrong with that is just where people take this idea of collective responsibility and, and think it means collective contribution, which, of course, isn't entirely accurate, in that we all have a role to play in, in pushing for climate justice but that doesn't mean we're all equally at fault for it um, and that's again the kind of this argument that keeps getting pushed onto young people which is like well if you care about climate change so much why don't you go vegan why don't you take five minute showers why don't you you know totally sink down your own carbon footprint well, it's like just because we're advocating for change doesn't mean that we each have that exact same role to play because my 19 years of you know living in London aren't the same as 19 years of shell like terrorizing people across the world in the search for um, fossil fuels, you know, so that's that's also kind of all these things that young people have to fight and push for all the time. And it makes it so exhausting and tiring for us all the time. Yeah. And one thing that really irritated me is like someone was like, oh, look at these protesters. They probably driven to get to the protest. Fair enough, I understand if it was like someone just driving down, but the thing is people need to understand that people have different accessibilities. Maybe that person was disabled, maybe that is their only form of transport. Maybe there isn't, you know, public transport that's accessible for them. So I think it's about people really understanding other people's situations in life and why they're advocating for this and realising it's a crisis that involves all of us. It's not just like an individual, oh, it's young people's future or whatnot. It's literally, it's a problem that we all are facing. Thanks, I think you've, you've both spoken really well about the need to challenge these big corporations and you know, the need to not just uh, keep blaming individuals and uh, yeah, not treat it as just a problem of needing to stop using plastic straws um, or whatever. Um, I think um, 
because it's World Mental Health Day, I think there was a recent survey of 10,000 young people from all over the world, I think you might have come across it, where they found that I think 60% of people felt very worried or extremely worried about climate change, you know, 60 to 25 year old age range. I know you've, you've both done research in this area. Uh, do you have any further thoughts about the relationship between climate change and mental health I mean, among young people? Just going back to the topic of health, um, financial costs to prescriptions, that's costing money. Um, just general like fears and anxieties that as you get older, you know, your lung capacity, everything, there's so much at risk just living in London. Um, the fact that in 2013, we lost a nine year old girl in Lewisham, you know, things like that. And we're in 2021 now, you're thinking by now we should have, you know, a, a better place or a better city to, to at least like, have better air quality. But it doesn't seem like we're going down that direction. It seems like we're going down an opposite direction. And I'm just going to say, yeah, a lot of young people have a lot of anxieties and fears. There's no proper green spaces to go and actually, you know, just fill the air and, you know, just enjoy the environment because it's all polluted. Um, the anxieties are very high. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I haven't done formal research on this, um, but I, I do think that young people's greatest asset is art energy and our excitement and it's what we bring to so many spaces and so many movements but eco-anxiety is kind of the exact antithesis to that it's paralyzing it leaves so many young people in such a difficult position where you feel like you, you can't do anything and anything you that you can do it's never enough um because you're told constantly you're so responsible for everything that's wrong with the world and if you try to fix anything about it um, doesn't matter anyway because it's all going to collapse and and climate change is totally inevitable and we have no future and it's all apocalyptic and that's terrifying. Um, I, I found out about climate change when I was like six years old and we were basically told that the only way to solve any of it was to get our dads to stop um, using like aerosol cans when they were shaving. And that was it, that was literally all we were told. And so for the, basically the next 10 years of my life, I just thought we had this inevitable void in our future um, that eventually could, to kind of get over the anxiety around that, I literally just had to accept it and that's, awful that's an awful kind of space to live in and I was so happy to find that kind of comradeship around so many other young people who did want to act on climate justice and social justice and change the world around us and that uplifted me so much but if we don't embrace nature around us through green spaces if we don't see urgent action um, if we don't you know think about the fact that I think it's over a fifth of schools in London are susceptible to flooding and and Young people are constantly choking on kind of our polluted air. Like you mentioned the case of, of Ella, the girl who died in 2013. That's only very recently in the last couple of years kind of been declared as, you know, a death that was caused because of dangerous and illegal levels of air pollution that is, you know, directly tied to the climate crisis. These are very real fears that young people have all the time. And of course, we're not alone in fearing those things. We're also not alone in acting in it. But the more we're pushed to the side and the more our voices are ignored or kind of vaguely like tucked to the side at very very important spaces like cop 26 and and in places of power and decision making then the harder it gets to to keep going and i think it's on all of us to constantly uplift each other and constantly remind each other that we have changed the world before we've changed the world many many times over hundreds and thousands of years we've seen huge and dramatic systemic transformational change and we can do that again we just need to keep ramping up our efforts very literally to bring kind of demonstrations and protests to an unprecedented scale, to push ourselves into spaces where we haven't been allowed into before and to uplift every single person around us all the time. Otherwise, we won't get anywhere. Right, then um, you kind of <laughs> touched on my next question really about, you know, how do you cope with that eco-anxiety? Um, you've talked about involvement in the movement. Is there anything else about, have any other ideas about how people can, can try and cope with the, this? Yeah, I can jump in. Um, personally, you touched on like having different creative mediums to sort of relay the message. I, I'm all for that. I think being able to share your anxieties and fears through film production or through a spoken word piece or something creative where it doesn't just speak to someone like just like you know it doesn't just speak to their mind but it really speaks to their soul and you know people can really understand where you're coming from and what your anxieties and fears are and I think 
um, just empowering more young people to do that, um, giving more young people the platform to do that, to talk about possible solutions, um, and just listening to the youth, listening to what they actually recommend and trying to genuinely put that into practice um, and to just stop the tokenism, like genuinely bring in people from the communities and not just have a COP26 and say, yes, yeah, Youth Empowerment Day, but let's not ask any young Londoner anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think um, you're having real conversations and taking it to higher places and just empowering young people in whatever creative way possible. Yeah, literally couldn't put it better myself. Yeah, great. Um, how do you think the pandemic has affected the movement? Uh, I know, you know it's taking people off the streets for a little bit, but do you think it's also kind of made people more aware of the kind of crisis that we're in? Has it meant people have um, you know, seen the links between health and the environment a bit more? What are your thoughts? Can I just say, I feel like the pandemic was just like this massive plaster onto the world, like just in a way kind of healed the world from a bit because it was just like like next to no human activity, taking planes, like driving cars, polluting our beautiful earth. And I think that was quite nice just to see things that I'd never seen before, like, you know, in China, like that. The sky rise, it, it, was, it was never seen before because it was so polluted. And then be, like, to be able to see that was just so powerful because it's like, hold up, when we just step back for a sec and stop like damaging and prodding and provoking our earth, you can see how it flourishes. Um, and I do think it actually did make people wake up and be like, whoa, hang on, like this, this isn't normal. Um, but yeah, I, I think it did. Yeah, I think there was, there was this element of like, this is a moment to step back and reassess. Um, I think just even just in terms of eco anxiety and burnout, for me personally, that was pandemic was a huge moment is in which we could say, well, um, you know, we we have to slow down, we have to reassess how much of our work is going in a productive way, what direction we want to take our organizing in, um, what we want to do next. But on top of that, I think the pandemic was also um, a microcosm of kind of the dangers to come, um, and. I kind of hate the term microcosm because of course the pandemic wasn't micro, of course it was devastating on a macro scale. Um, and, of, and of course it was a horrific time and, and in many ways it's still ongoing. And I think it has shown us just how unprepared we are for even greater consequences of the climate crisis. It's shown us how um, gaps of social and economic equity and income um, widen whenever there is a crisis, how those gaps are not being um, adequately closed, how there is not enough support and funding for so many of our communities. Um, how even though, you know, so many places in London are thriving all the time, there are so many of our communities that are just suffering constantly. Um, I live right under Grenfell and we haven't seen any change in the last four years and, and we didn't see a lot of change before that either. Um, you know, these are parts of London where we're sort of very much hidden from the limelight and um, those inequities constantly, those social injustices, just become greater and greater with every crisis. We saw that with the pandemic and we're gonna see it on an unimaginable scale as the climate crisis gets worse and worse. And I think that did open up a lot of people's eyes um, to what urgent action was needed and how huge of a scale we need that action to be on in order to tackle this properly. Hi, um, my name's Noor. Um, yeah, let's just hope no one's crying today. <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything is fine. So, See, we tell ourselves this lie nearly every day of our lives, but see, really, truly, like, in your mind, is everything fine? Look, it's okay to not be okay all the time because there's stress in this life, and if you ask me what it is, what's stressing you, why, I don't really say much because I don't really know, and I know that I'm not the only one that feels like this inside. See, he was fine yesterday, but today he just wants to hide and he can't figure out why, so he's in his bedroom and he's shut his blinds, but it's still light outside, not that he'd know, because, see, he didn't sleep all night and he just don't feel right and he just don't know why. See, his thoughts race, they take over, he can't control the pace, he rolls over and he cries. 
But just then, his girl calls. He picks up the phone, he completely changes his tone and he tells her, everything's fine. She says, are you sure? Look, I feel like there's something on your mind. Look, I just told you I'm fine. All right. See, they laugh, they smile, they finish talking. He cuts the line, but see, that was just to lay back down to cry because everything is not fine. And look, even when it is fine, it's not really because I'm waiting for it not to be fine again because look, I know that moment's coming. And you see, when that anxiety builds up inside, I'm tired of holding it in. Is this this anxiety that I feel is some sort of sin? Like, if I'm not okay, I must not believe in God. Like, if I have anxiety, my faith must be weak. Once that's built up, I'm sure you'll be happy. What the fuck? Look, see, the amount of faith that I have, you wouldn't believe. Look, my faith is the only thing that allows me to breathe. Look, I've spent hours, days, weeks, months on my knees asking God, please, help me understand why. Look, why do I feel like everything isn't fine with no substantial reason as to why? Look, so now I'm hiding behind a fake smile in denial, believing everything is fine. Because, look, if I fake this smile long enough, maybe the wind will blow. And I'll be stuck like this forever. <laughs> Look, at least that's what Mumsy told me happens when we make funny faces in the wind. See, a smile is a funny sort of face because sometimes it just happens. And see, there are moments there you can't replace, but see, when it's forced and when it's faked, when you're only smiling to get yourself through the day, smiling to get yourself through the pain. See, that smile is lost in vain because when people stop looking, that smile turns into a sigh because everything, everything is not fine. Um, I wrote that piece during lockdown um, just because I feel like it just became really prevalent that like everyone is kind of just struggling with their own shit on their own and just telling everyone that they're fine <laughs> even when more likely you're not. Good evening. My name is Woodsy. And this first piece I'm going to do for you is called The Mirror of Erised. The happiest man on earth would look into the mirror and see himself exactly as he is. This mirror shows us neither knowledge nor truth. Men have wasted away in front of it and even gone mad. Have you ever asked yourself that question? If you looked into the mirror of Erised, what would you see? What do I see? Looking back at me. I see an older me, waving, happily. Here I'm a little bit slimmer, my beard's a bit thicker, but this is just fantasy. Gradually as I look a little closer, I see a bit of scripture written on my shoulder. I can't quite make out the words I think they read as the following. Keep doing what you're doing. I am your tomorrow king. My eyes catch the eyes of my eyes looking back at me. I might just find that my time happens naturally. My light shines bright, don't go blind. I'm just magically wicked with the lyrics and I will defy gravity. I see me in my happy place. I see that I'm at peace. I made it through those crappy days and finally got some sleep. I made it to the mountain top. Drank you from the fountain and sprouted crops I cropped out the negative energy Removed enemies from my memory And the names of the loved ones written on the stones in the cemetery There's no scars on my head but I'm the boy who lived I took my chance like chance Made some laughs for the kids Put craft and graft in my bars Didn't make charts or the hits But I made my mark no scar I got a story to give I got a story to tell whether it's about right here, right now, with a person who looks just under 40 in my reflection, I felt I was the same but wiser. I aged, but it's either that or extinction. They say men have gone mad looking into the mirror. I wonder if I suffer from no symptoms. See, I aspire to inspire before I expire. Nothing seemed to go right until I left and became a writer. I've had ups and downs and even lost direction. Stopped recognizing my reflection until I started reflecting on myself and my well being. On my health, with my hell being only a state of mind. They find me hard to swallow because I taste the pride. They can keep their prejudice. I'll make your life a roller coaster just for my amusement if you become my nemesis. Remember this if beauty is in the eye of the beholder, how come I can only see right through you when my eyes are closed? I have closure. What I really see back is myself on a stage. In front of this audience reciting the rhymes that I got to write on the page. A smile on my face. 
a specific tone in my voice. What I see looking back at me is my path and my choice. Thank you very much. If you got a light on your phone, you can put it up as well. You probably can't do lighters, so if you got a light on your phone, let me see the lights. Hey! All right, yo. You wanna express yourself and I'm here for it. Love yourself, I'm here for it. Tired of the same stuff, tired of the fake love. You're the same as us and I'm here for it. Feel like you need someone there for you. Now the rain is gone, you need a clear review. I'm there for you, so be there for me. There is stay not to us and that's what's meant to be. Express yourself and I'm here for it. Love yourself, I'm here for it. Tired of the same stuff, tired of the fake love. You're the same as us and I'm here for it. Feel like you need someone there for you. Now the rain is gone, you need a clear review. I'm there for you, so be there for me. There is stay not to us. Hearing I'm saying I'm making those changes I'm loving myself, I don't feel obligated I'm hearing I'm racing, I'm saving my changing I'm making those changes to change where I'm staying Saying I love it, we can rise above it Promise we got it, I promise, I promise Hearing I mean it, you can face your demons And leave them defeated, get out of the deep end Deep end on me and I won't let you down Promise, I promise you'll turn it around Hearing you're happy and we're getting near And whatever you need man, just trust me I'm here Express yourself and I'm here for it Love yourself, I'm here for it Tired of the same stuff, tired of the fake love You're the same as us and I'm here for it Feel like you need someone there for you And now the rain is gone, you need a clear review I'm there for you, so be there for me The rest ain't up to us and that's what's meant to be Express yourself and I'm here for it Love yourself, I'm here for it Tired of the same stuff, tired of the fake love You're the same as us and I'm here for it Feel like you need someone there for you Now the rain is gone, you need a clear review I'm there for you, so be there for me The rest ain't up to us Learning on my journey, I've been searching for my paradise Trying to take a peek at you and that shit left me paralysed My boys are having weed and booze, I think I'll just grab a Sprite That's not what I need to do and I just need to manage Manage my damage, my vanish, I'm thinking of it Never stopping, I'm just here and I'm saying It's no popping but I'm loving where I'm going And I'm feeling what I'm saying, what I'm saying, what I'm saying Hey, express yourself and that's what I do I don't really know and I ain't got a clue This is what I do and I messed up the lyrics But you know what, I don't really care about the image Hey, express yourself and I'm here for it Love yourself, I'm here for it Tired of the same stuff, tired of the fate Love, you're the same as us and I'm here for it. Hey, Fred London, make some noise. Come on, come on, one time, make some noise. It's honestly a blessing to be here. Thank you so much to the team. We're gonna go for the chorus one more time. Yeah, man, feeling grateful. Hey, that's what I said. We're gonna go one more time. Yo. You'll express yourself and I'm here for it. Love yourself, I'm here for it. Tired of the same stuff, tired of the fake love. You're the same as us and I'm here for it. Feel like you need someone there for you. Now the rain is gone, you need a clear review. I'm there for you, so be there for me. The rest ain't up to us and that's what's meant to be. Express yourself and I'm here for it. Love yourself, I'm here for it. Tired of the same stuff, tired of the fake love. You're the same as us and I'm here for it. Feel like you need someone there for you Now the rain is gone, you need a clear review I'm there for you, so be there for me The rest ain't up to us and that's what's meant to be It's alright to cry tears I'll bring the light to your nightmares I'll always be right there Trust me, I'm right here I can't give you the world But I can give you my words Trust me, I'm right here Peace out, peace in Thank you very much